Looking to get high on a new water sport? Well, you literally can riding a flying water bike. It attaches with a long hose to the back of a jet ski, elevating you up to almost 40 feet above the water where you can perform aerial flips and spins. The jet ski's water thrust feeds three jet nozzles on the flying water bike. One propels the bike upward. The other two feed jet control nozzles that maneuver the bike. The bike's frame is made out of aluminum parts because it has to be lightweight, as well as relatively corrosion resistant, especially if it's going to be used in salt water. This curved tube will become the lifting jet. To build each jet control nozzle, a worker places a housing on an alignment fixture, then hammers an end cap into position. Holding the housing steady with a clamp, the worker welds on the end cap. This housing will cover the bushing at the heart of the jet control nozzle. He inserts an elbow into the opening in the end cap and welds the parts together. After welding a jet nozzle cone to the other end of the elbow, he welds a handlebar to the housing. These five welded parts make up the body of the first jet control nozzle. To prep for painting, the manufacturers rough up all the aluminum parts by tumbling them with abrasive stones. This component splits the portion of the water thrust that bypasses the lifting jet, sending it in opposite directions to the jet control nozzles. The lifting jet tube now has a nozzle cone welded to one end, a coupling for attaching the fire hose to the other, and an oval hole in the curve, which aligns with the angled end of a straight tube in the middle called the backbone. After positioning parallel support bars between the lifting jet and the splitter, the welder fuses all the parts together. Then he flips the assembly jig and welds on the seat support. The seat support attaches where the lifting jet and backbone meet. After masking the ends of the splitter, a worker sprays the completed frame jet control nozzles and other aluminum parts with powder coat. This helps protect against corrosion. The parts go into an oven for up to a half hour to bake the powder coat to a shiny finish. Then, workers install an aluminum cam lock to securely fasten the fire hose to the coupling. Another worker attaches the remaining components to the frame. First, he screws in the pair of foot plates on which the rider stands. Then, he bolts the bottom half of each plate to the parallel support bars and the top half to just ahead of the cam lock. He mounts a padded knee rest to the support bars. It can be easily repositioned to accommodate the rider's height. On each unpainted end of the splitter, he installs an internal support ring then a precision fit nylon bushing and an external support ring which he screws to the splitter. The worker slides the jet control nozzle housing over the bushing and screws it to the internal support ring. The two control nozzles maneuver the water bike. To ascend, you pull back gradually on both of them simultaneously. To descend, you push forward on both. To spin, you move one forward and one back. And to do a backflip, you yank both control nozzles all the way back. He assembles the water bike's body. It's made of molded polyethylene with a waterproof urethane pad to cushion the front of the rider's body. The seat is made of the same padded material. Both pad and seat attach with plastic clips. The hollow body is completely watertight, which is why the bike floats. The final step is to mate the body to the frame. The completed water bicycle weighs 30 pounds. Once connected to a jet ski with a fire hose, this water bike flies at a speed of up to 20 miles per hour. 
By maneuvering the jet nozzles, it does backflips, multiple spins, and even dives 20 feet underwater.